So we are still dealing with exponential functions, but we're going to take a look at some word problems and how you could model it with an exponential function. So um, first of all, I want to just review a little bit with percentages. And um, suppose you buy a pair of Nikes on sale for $50 and the sales tax is 7%. What is the amount of tax you pay? So I think most of you know that you would take the, the total amount and multiply by 0 0.07. And so you get 50 times 0 0.07 because you change 7% to a decimal value. So you would get, and since it's money, we'll say $3.50. So that would be the tax. But when you consider what the total price is, obviously that's not the total price because you have to pay your $50 plus your 0 0.07 times the $50. And so you end up getting $53.50. So um, one of the things that I actually do frequently, if I'm, especially if I have a calculator, um, instead of doing it as a two-step process, instead of taking the amount, multiplying by the, the tax rate, and then adding that to how much it costs, um, you can actually just take your $50 and multiply by 1.07. and notice you get $53.50. So you might wonder, okay, well, why this? Because this 0 0.07 represents the 7% tax, and this one right here represents the 100% um, of the price. So that's just the, the, whatever the price was. So that's what that represents. Um, so, so that's a shortcut. So instead of doing it in two parts, you can do it in one part. So suppose you buy a pair of Nikes on sale for, and notice this time instead of a dollar amount, I've put in just X dollars. And the tax is 0 .07, or 0 .7%, or 7%, so 0.07. So think about what we did. Well, we took X and then we, or we took the 50, but now we take x times 0 0.07. Um, I'm going to put the, the decimal value first. I'm going to write it this way because that's typical. We usually write, um, we write the, we put the, the numerical value, the coefficient in front of the variable. So then it says, what's the total price? Well, you have to pay for the shoes plus you have to pay for the sales tax. Well, when there's no number in front of the x, remember it's like there's a 1 there. So now we have like terms, and if we add 1 plus 0 0.07, we get 1.07x. Okay, so that is that is good to remember, and we're going to actually make use of that when we do um, some problems coming up here. So here are some formulas that you are going to need. Um, one of them deals with exponential growth, one of them exponential decay. Um, what I recommend you do is pause the video and copy these down on your notes. And then when you're ready, I'll talk through and tell you what everything means. So first of all, I want you to notice, um, remember that our format for our equations is y equals a times b to the x. And we still have that. If you look over here, we have y equals something okay, a value, I'm not calling it A, I'm calling it Y not, N-A-U-G-H-T is how you would say it, is spell that, but it's called Y not, um, times some value, and instead of a B, I'm calling it one plus R, raised to some power, and instead of calling it an X, I'm calling it T because it represents time. Now, these all have certain, they're all, these are all special values here, this Y not we call the initial amount. Well, think about an initial amount. Remember, this was the um, this right here was our y-intercept of our graph. Um, that's what you get when you let x equals zero. You get the y-intercept. Well, that makes sense. The initial amount is when t equals zero. So this is just our y-intercept or our initial amount. Um, this represents this this growth rate represents this the one plus. It's kind of like the um, the one plus point zero seven on the problem I just did. So um, that's you know what you're going to get to get this multiplier, this number, and then raised to a power. So this 1 plus r is like the b. Now exponential decay, 
sometimes in thing, instead of things getting larger, like, you know, when you add, add tax to your purchase, it gets larger. Sometimes things get smaller. Like, you know, you could have a population of a town. Maybe, maybe it's, um, maybe the town is dying out and you have, the population is decreasing. You can model that with a decay. And then notice it's still the initial amount instead of a, and it's still a T for time, but instead of one plus R, it's one minus R because it's getting smaller, which means this right here is gonna be a decimal value less than one. So now we're gonna kind of use these um, to help us solve some problems. So again, you might want to pause the video and copy this problem down so you'll have these to look back at. So we've got this first problem, um, exponential growth. So you know which model we're gonna use. We're gonna use the model y equals y naught times one plus r to the t power. So now we have to decide what all this is. You decide to invest $1,000, so that seems probably important for our problem, at 2% annual interest. Okay, so, so instead of it's sales tax, but it works the same way. Now, your percent does have to be changed to a decimal, so we are gonna have to write this as 0 0.02. Remember, you move the decimal point two places to the left when you because percent means per 100. Um, create an exponential model to describe the amount of your investment over time. Well, this is our why not, because this is what we're starting with. So we have y equals 1,000, I can fill that in. And then I'm gonna have one plus 0 0.02 raised to the t power because r is 0 0.02. Now I can simplify and just say this is 1,000 times 1.02 to the t power. And that would be my exponential model. Notice it's in the form a times b to the x. It's that same format. Um, so this would be um, an exponential model that would describe the situation. So then we want to use our exponential model to answer some questions. So for the first question, how much money will you have in five years? Well, that's t. t equals five. So I'm going to plug that into my equation. So I have a thousand times 1.02 to the fifth power. And when I do that, I get, and we'll round to the nearest cent since it's money, 1104.08. Okay, so that would be how much after five years. Um, how long will it take to double your money? Okay, think about what that means. If I double my money, remember we started with a thousand, so if I double my money, I want to know how long will it take until I have a thousand dollars. I'm sorry, two thousand dollars, because I want to double it. So that's the value that gets filled in for y. So I'm going to fill in two thousand equals a thousand times one point zero two to the t power. Now I'm trying to solve for time, and I'm just going to tell you right now we don't know how to do that yet because in or, this is an exponential equation right here. And we have to know how to undo, I can't like spell and write and talk at the same time. Um, so we need to know how to undo that. And so we're gonna do a little bit of guess and check on this. First, the first thing I have to do though, is I have to get this part by itself. I have to isolate the exponential part. So I'm gonna divide each side by a thousand. So I get two equals 1.02 to the t power. Okay, so I'm gonna take some guesses for t. So I'm gonna try 1.02 to the fifth power. Well, we already, oh. Oh, and I'm trying to get two, and that's too small. So 1.02 to the 10th power, still too small. 1.02 to the hundredth power. Okay, too big, way too big. So, so I'm narrowing it down. Um, 1.02 to 
about to the 50th. Okay, and you see I'm, I'm getting closer. Now I can use my calculator and if I wanted to plot 1.02 to the, I'm going to put an X here, and I'm going to put in Y2, I'm going to put 2, and actually, I don't think I'm going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go to my table. Um, let's set up our table to um, ask an auto. Okay, so if you set up a table, ask auto, and then let's go here. Now, I already had some things in there. I'm just going to delete them out because we, we knew what 50 was. So now I'm going to go lower. I'm trying to get 2, so I'm going to try 40. I'm going to try 30. That's too small, so I'm going to try 35. You can kind of see how I'm doing this. Ooh, we're getting pretty close there. Um, so let's try um, 36. Okay, so that's too high. So 35.5, um, oops, it froze up. Okay, so let's just go with T is about 35 years. Now, you can see that's kind of like cumbersome to have to do a little bit of guessing and checking. Later, we will have a way um, that we can solve an exponential equation when we learn about what what function is the inverse of exponential. So think about how, you know, to undo square root, you square. To undo multiplying, you divide. So what do you do to undo exponential? And that's what we don't know yet. All right, so this next problem I'm going to do is going to illustrate exponential decay. So again, you might want to go ahead and pause this and copy down the problem. Um, the current population of a town is, oh, first of all, let me just say, since we know it's decay, we're dealing with y equals y naught 1 minus r raised to the t power. It's decay, so it's going down. Um, the current population of a town is 124,000 and is decreasing at a rate of 1.5% each year. So I'm going to change this to 0 0.015. Remember, you move it two decimal places. Um, keep in mind, this is our y naught value because this is the current population, so that's what it is right now. Um, this is my value of r. Create an exponential model to describe the population each year. So my time is going to be in years. Time doesn't always have to be in years. Sometimes it can, it can be monthly or you, know, you can have t be a different time period. So we're going to have 124,000 times 1 minus 0 0.015 raised to the t power. So we get y equals 124,000 times, this is going to be 0 0.985 to the t power. And that would be my exponential model. By the way, you cannot multiply um, the 124,000 times the 0 0.985 because remember, order of operations says you would do exponents before you multiply. So this cannot be simplified. So watch out for that. All right, so according to our model, what will the population be in five years? So what we're going to do is take our numbers and fill in a five for our time. I had to fix my calculator, so hopefully it will work for us this time. And we get, it will be about 114,975. So that would be the approximate population. That's what our model would predict for that. If this pattern continues, when will the population fall below a thousand? So now this is the y value. So we're going to plug this in here. I'm sorry, I think I said a thousand, a hundred thousand. And this time we're solving for time because we're trying to figure out how long it will take. So I still have that. Okay, so remember I have to isolate this exponential part first. So I'm going to divide each side by 124,000. So we get 0.985 to the t power 
Notice I can just cancel those zeros out there. Okay, so I came over to my calculator and did 100 divided by 124, and, and you get this decimal value. Um, if you change that to a fraction, you get 25 over 31. So when you think about what should I do, which one's better? If I write down 0 0.8065, I'm rounding this, and rounding can be um, can really make a big difference in your answer when you're dealing with exponential functions. So whenever possible, use the fraction value because that's an exact value. So if you can, then do that. Now we're going to try and, and figure out this 25 over 31, which I guess with our method. If, if I were doing this um, the mathematical way and not guessing and checking, um, then, then I would definitely want to use that. But in all honesty, since we're trying to um, just kind of do a guess and check strategy. We'll try this. So 0.985 raised to a power. And then I'm going to go to my table. And I'm going to delete these things out. I had it set up to ask an auto again still. So I'm going to just try. Um, I'm looking for 0 0.8065. Okay, so somewhere between 10 and 20. So let's try 15. Mm, needs to be more than that. So maybe 16. Well, I'm going the wrong way. 14, because it's getting smaller, remember. So 14, 13. So sometime in between 13 and 14. So we'll just say um, in about 14 years. Um, actually, yeah, because then it would fall below. So about 14 years. Um, Fourteen years. It's gonna actually. It's a little higher. It's still. It won't be quite there. So so honestly, it's probably. It fourteen years would not quite be there. And eh, we'll say about fourteen or fifteen years. Um. So we would be much more precise if we had a math, more mathematical way and not just guessing and checking. Um. But right now, that's the method I want you to do because it 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 will be better for you right now to kind of do that method. Okay, so that is it as far as how you're going to write. So you're going to have to pay attention to the wording of a problem. And if it is um, an exponential growth problem, if, if the numbers are getting larger, increasing, then you need to make sure you're following the one that does 1 plus r. And if it's decreasing, you need to make sure you follow the model that's 1 minus r.